Where do we start? At the beginning. Okay, so let's let's introduce today's episodes. Uh, what we are going to deal with today is how did we go from using our own disk space to cloud? When did we start paying other people to uh, store our data? How safe is the user data? Mm -hmm. How cheap it is to store a terabyte or two of your data, and should or, many. You or should you store it in the in the cloud? How those services that uh, advertise that they're going to be unlimited for the lifetime uh, for just whatever dollars per month work, why are they able to do uh, the, the thing that they do? And their private counterparts. Yes, and how to make sense of it all. Okay. So does it make sense to have a cloud storage? Does it make sense to have your own, own storage? how to configure your own storage, what are the possibilities of your own private cloud. And it, uh, the, uh, did it come to time when you as a private person with a limited knowledge, let's say that you have limited knowledge of, of IT, that you can actually provide your own private cloud on your own premises that is going to work and it's going to be cheaper than any cloud storage there is out, outside. Having said all of that, welcome to the Debt IT Show. Let's roll the intro and then we'll see you. Okay. So... You seem a little bit chirpy today. No, I have. I'm. I'm being. I'm being a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't say tired, but uh, exhausted uh, with all the different things that I have read about the cloud storage and different uh, types of cloud in the last couple of days. And uh, it Excuse seems. Excuse me. You read about cloud storage. Yes. Unfortunately, yes. You didn't. You didn't well, know about this, an and end. this is the reason why I already uh, have my first um, uh, thing that I want to show you. It is the Headstone Cloud uh, storage plans for the collocated storage and uh, at their places called Storage Box. Uh, the reason I was reading about cloud storage is because I was trying to uh, make sense out of how should I backup my data. Okay. Cool. And. Uh, I wanted to see, is it possible for me to create something that is going to be uh, multi-computer or multi-host, uh, cheap and easy to use at the same time? Okay. And how much is the, could this cost? For backup only or? For backup only, maybe. basically, because I want to have something in the storage, uh, in the cloud. I don't want to deal with the disks. Either uh, either uh, uh, that be, may be uh, old rusted, uh, rusty HDDs or the SSDs, whatever. I don't want to be uh, rel uh, relying on um, my desktops and my laptops being on all, all the time uh, to be able to uh, connect to the data that I need. Okay. So the documents. So basically, I'm trying to find something that is going to work um uh, as close to Dropbox or uh, OneDrive or Google Drive or whatever as possible, but that is going to cost less. Okay. So basically the reason why I, uh, I called this episode or why I, uh, I wanted us to do this episode, because as we previously mentioned in some of the previous episodes of our podcast, we are basically the polar opposites when it comes to parts of the topic that we discuss. We both use cloud services for storage for a variety of reasons. And we have a little bit of a different approach to how we keep our data that's not necessarily business data or maybe private data, let's call it that way. And that can actually have a couple of adverse effects as we had uh, we had a discussion about a week ago or so when I was you know, talking to you about the uh, one of the uh, topics of our, our classes and lab work that you didn't upload to our shared storage and whatnot, which uh, afterwards when you described to me what kind of a setup you did for that so that you make sure that it does, I, I pissed my pants off laughing because that's what it is. And we're going to talk about that too because that's the approach of, uh, of somebody who is uh, inventive in terms of how to use cloud services for the benefit or the lack thereof of storage. Okay, let me let me set up the stage. Uh, so the problem that I have with the cloud services right now is that I use all of them. Okay. Uh, 
for different reasons. Uh, or you say that time, to yourself. Now, for different reasons, over the time, I uh, created an account and started using Dropbox. I was using OneDrive on at least three accounts, if not more. Mm -hmm. I'm using Google Drive on at least three accounts, if not more. Uh, I have a Backblaze account for the um, uh, backup. for backup, and I have at least another ac one or two accounts on the box, so another backup, uh, another storage uh, site, and I have a couple of um, cloud. I would call them droplets if I were in the uh, digital ocean world, but. I have a, a couple of machines that have uh, enough storage attached to them so I can use them as backup. And I'm not paying for most of them, those. Mm -hmm. And I have two problems. First problem is that even I don't know where anything where, is. Where anything is. Mm -hmm. Okay, but this can be this can be sorted by using some sort of an indexing tool like uh, every, uh, everything or whatever. Uh, there is a tool that I always used. It's called uh, Search Everything by uh, Void Tools, and I, no, we mentioned I, it. In one yes, of the I, I cannot, I cannot uh, recommend, recommend it enough. Mm -hmm. uh, but the main reason, my main uh, intention of the, what I need to do uh, right now is I want to get rid of some of those services because they have started to make my life complicated. Mm -hmm. When I uh, I recently upgraded to a new PC. When I wanted to grab some files from a storage, I realized that I need to install six clients. I needed to install different uh, uh, ways of connecting to different uh, versions of the cloud. I even started using some of those multi-cloud solutions that are able to connect to uh, different cloud solutions at the same time to be able to um, uh, reconcile all of them into one place. So I realized that I have a problem and I yes, have a huge do. storage problem. Yeah. And then what I decided in my uh, immense uh, creativity is to try to first uh, roll, roll all, the, the, all of the cloud services that don't use into one. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, since we are using um, a Synology drive that is connected to all of, our, of, all of our, our accounts, I connected this drive directly to the Dropbox. Hence me pissing off my pants laughing. Yes, and then I connect. What you don't know is that I also connected all my uh, OneDrives to Dropbox. So, so you t you've taken it to extreme and another level. So I'm I'm expe I'm, I'm wholeheartedly expecting that uh, sometime something is going to happen and I'm going to be uh, the one who is going to be crying for uh, data. Or the, either that or I'm going to just uh, short circuit the internet and make everything uh, but not work. Can I ask something? Mm, yes. So I know that you had five or six or seven or eight or 10 or 20 clients installed on your Windows, uh, um, you know, PC, PCs, basically. Okay. So that you can integrate with all of the storage, different types of storage accounts that you're using. Is that the reason why Synology's drive didn't work for you? Because it was pissing you off, so you shut it down or paused it? No, this is what it does uh, on, on itself. No, it doesn't. But by, by itself, I don't know, uh, on Windows 11, by itself, it sometimes pauses itself and then uh, continues to do something else. It, it, it could be that I did misconfigure it because I didn't do any configuration. There is a second part of that yes. question. Uh, that, that one is much more entertaining for me. So basically, you, you, you people who are watching this episode of our podcast are looking at one person here within the realms of our company who cannot make OneDrive work pr pr properly. Uh, I don't know why. It always worked well for me. Uh, I'm not completely sure that it always worked well for you, for you but uh, I'm going to give two possible so, uh, two possible reasons why, uh, why it isn't working. Your bad vibe with Microsoft might be one of them. Mm, it could be that. <laughs> uh, it could be that I have three accounts configured at the same time. Mm -hmm. And no, four. Okay. Four. And uh, I noticed that uh, one cloud has a, or one drive has a problem with synchronizing multiple accounts when it comes to uh, doing a round robin and just checking when everything is uh, when everything is okay. Sometimes it just gets stuck on a single account. Especially so if, if there are many files. Yes, and uh, one of those accounts has my uh, has a storage of my uh, images, so it has tens of thousands of images uh, stored on it. So I think that this could images be meaning pictures. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. 
So this could be one of those problems. Okay. And to be completely honest and to uh, be uh, pretty petty about it, mm-hmm. uh, ever since uh, the Microsoft fiasco with uh, not being able to store more than 20,000 uh, files on the OneDrive mm-hmm. way back then, I don't believe that they're able to do a cloud uh, storage uh, a solution. So the strength of your conviction is making OneDrive not work for you. And according to the latest uh, business uh, information about how AVS and Microsoft Cloud are uh, neck to neck when it comes yeah, to, neck to, neck. Yeah, to neck when it comes to <laughs> cloud services, I think that I'm not the only one who has some sort of a problem. Like two to one or something <laughs> like even more. I don't think that Microsoft Cloud is even in the first three right now. Yeah, I'm not I sure. Know. Yeah, I understand that. Basically. Uh, if I look in my laptop right now, so I have just one OneDrive account connected, but we are not using that one anymore because this was our mutual account that we were using as a as a team. Uh, we moved basically all of the data from that to uh, my, my Synology that I'm keeping in my office and home, and we are all synchronizing that. Now, this is also a part of the larger business process, actually, because we kind of like change the program in, in uh, uh, academic part of our work. So we change academic, academic, academic prog- program for our students. So we use that as a part of the migration process from new old program to new, to go from old storage to new storage and to filter out the data, create new presentations and whatnot, so that we have one place where the current data is uncluttered and all of the related additional documentation and uh, sources of information and uh, scientific articles that we can freely use and stuff like that. And I think that works pretty well for us, apart from the fact that you and one other colleague from our office, for some reason, um, uh, are unable to make your Windows work properly in terms of Synology uh, Cloud Drive synchronization, which I don't understand why, because it works perfectly for me every single time okay i'm just going to i'm just going to uh, quickly state the fact so two out of three people using your cloud uh, service four out of four uh, four out uh, two out of four people using your cloud station have problems with synchronization I, it, 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 it just it's just you are, you are going over uh, <laughs> you're smoothing over some other facts i have five different computers connected to that i have two i have five all five work perfectly so the strength in numbers sorry dude but uh, our other colleague, uh, Damir, his uh, home computer with Synology works as well. So I'm sorry, strength in numbers is against you. My two Windows uh, 11 And for our, our third colleague, Zlatan, uh, the, the reason why it didn't work for him was uh, for a simple reason. He paused it. Uh, okay. That's it, it. Okay. but On purpose. Okay, let's let's now stop talking about Synology in your own. We're going to uh, circle back to that, but yes, we're going to circle back to that. But because uh, what we are dealing with is right now is not a cloud uh, solution. This is uh, why not? You can treat that as a kind of like almost. Okay, but cloud I solution. want to circle back to it uh, once we come to your own home uh, based or home. Um, yeah, private. Ho- pri- private. Private yeah, cloud. Agreed. So you're uh, basically the cloud that you create uh, on your own. Let's let's kind of like. There are four different types of these things that you could use, like uh, um, completely private storage that you could use, basically like a, like a like a private cloud storage. You can have personal one. Those yes. two we are going to discuss. Uh, public cloud storage, and there yes. are hybrid different types. We are not going to get into hybrids. That's not the topic of the episode. We can talk about uh, the public cloud, S3, Blob storage, Google Cloud storage, whatnot. But I would uh, my my personal uh, suggestion is that we just keep it uh, keep the episode centered around the personal cloud storage like Google Drive, Dropbox, whatnot, and private cloud storage like on cloud, next cloud, Synology, whatnot. Okay, but let's let's uh, break this down into different things that we need to talk about. First, we are going to talk about only private storage. We are not interested in business storage. Business storage is a whole another topic. Okay, agreed. So, so uh, exactly uh, where I was going with this. Uh, the other thing is we are going to talk about storage uh, based on where it is. So in the cloud, in the office or at your home. Okay. Uh, and then we are going to talk, be talking about uh, how the clients work and what is the main intention that they are uh, they were created yeah, for. Use case. So uh, uh, I uh, I don't want to compare, uh, for example, Backblaze, which is entirely backup uh, mm-hmm. with Google Drive, with Google Drive or with Nextcloud. Agreed. Because Nextcloud and Google Drive have their own ideas. I think that Nextcloud is much better than Google Drive for some things. But Backblaze, 
doesn't belong to the same category as the uh, as those two. Agreed. So let's not deal with uh, uh, business storage. We can do that in another episode. Yes. Right. And the other thing that I want to talk about is how do you uh, connect to the cloud? Okay. Because, for example, I have a big problem with uh, things like Google Cloud, which when it comes to files, are lacking a lot of functionalities compared to something like Dropbox. Okay. Uh, and at the same time, I have a big problem with uh, something like Dropbox when it comes to uh, multi-user uh, editing support for different documents. Because okay. Google Cloud is much better than that. Because it's a collab suit. Yes, so it's collab suit. And of course, uh, I hate to say this, but OneDrive also works good when it comes to... Uh, Do you know how petty that sounds? When you say, I hate to admit that. Because yes. Because it, it, it's, it's against my grain. It, it it's is eating grain. away at your... Yes, it, it's yeah, eating away at me. Because one, uh, 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 in one hand, I say that OneDrive doesn't work. But when you're able to uh, synchronize your OneDrive to your uh, own drive, the actual result works. You are hopeless, man. And then uh, even the SharePoint works. Yes. So uh, there, is, there is also SharePoint and Teams mm -hmm. that are, could be sort of kind of considered uh, cloud storage for yeah. documents, uh, extremely specialized, but for documents, but yes. Mm -hmm. And there, there are also uh, different services that we are not going to talk about uh, today like paperless, like uh, different services that, are, that enable you to store a particular uh, kind of a document so that you can not, all, not only store it, but also index it, uh, search it, and so on. Okay. So let's, let's start talking about the cloud. Yeah. My main, my main pur uh, purpose when I was uh, uh, trying to learn about this was, store, uh, was backup. Okay. So I wasn't interested in uh, collaboration. I wasn't interested in sharing. I was not, wasn't interested in anything else other than being able to quickly store enormous amount of data from my particular local disk using as little technology as possible. In as secure as possible way. As secure as possible way, so I can uh, exit it, uh, access it if I need to. Okay. And at the same time, not waste money. Mm -hmm. And my main thing, what... Uh, my main thing, the thing that I'm comparing to uh, right now is I use Backblaze as my primary backup service. Okay. Backblaze is amazing mm -hmm. when you have one PC. But the problem is once you have three, four, five, six, seven PCs is that since you're paying your licenses per PC, so per, per device, suddenly the cost of the backup itself is not that uh, competitive. That competitive. Uh, I don't have that much to uh, back up on my laptop, but sometimes I want some pieces of my laptop to be back, back up. I think there is a question that big begs to be asked. Yes. Why do you have five, six, seven PCs? Because I'm strange. Um, it, just because. I'm just going to go with the, why do you care? It's my PC. <laughs> no, I'm not actually asking that in any kind of uh, condescending or whatever way. Is there a specific use case for that? Uh, to, to educate our listeners, actually. Yes and no. Okay. Uh, one of the one uh, the biggest answer is probably yes uh, because I can, but at the same okay. time, uh, the number of devices that I use to produce content. Mm -hmm. uh, I have two desktops at home. Mm -hmm. One is my old desktop, which I didn't uh, completely abandon, so I'm still working. You uh, and still you are still using it. Okay. I have another desktop that is my new desktop, and I'm uh, in the process of moving files to it. I don't want to move all the files to it because I don't want to have the spinning disk anymore in it. And mm -hmm. my older PC has an eight terabyte uh, disk in it. So most of my non-important files are on the disk. Uh, I have a laptop that is running Windows that I want to be able to use in my everyday work. I have a smaller de laptop that I sometimes take with me and that is not used as often, but uh, when I need it, I need the files. And also I have a Linux the laptop that I'm using sometimes. So suddenly I have a number of machines that I'm using uh, more or less often. And I have my uh, iPhone that also needs to be backed up because it creates the most important problem, the most important documents, the images. I want to have pictures of my kid. I want to have uh, pictures that I uh, take over the day. So mm -hmm. I need also a place to store them. Okay. For me, I have... Basically the same, uh, roughly the same amount of computers, maybe one or two more. I have them because I use them for different applications. 
So uh, I think we touched upon that in one yes. of the episodes, but I have a MacBook Pro that's used only for the podcast reasons. Reason for that is pretty straightforward. I just don't want to carry stuff around because these things, all of the equipment that we use is heavy. I want to have them in place. I have three more MacBooks that are used for completely different use cases. One of them is for my band, one and two of them are old and new one that are for my studio purposes, for music that I do production. And I have one desktop at home. I don't have more of them. And I do have three more of these Lenovo laptops, but you know I use them only for Red Hat exams. Yes. So they are irrelevant for the discussion because I don't back them up, nor should I, nor nor will I ever back them up. And recently I've started we're looking into, uh, actually uh, it was uh, this was uh, by your suggestion, to start thinking about using Backblaze. I find them to be quite okay and came to the same problem which is I need to back up, let's say, three computers or four. Um, and if I do that, the price uh, doesn't really appeal It doesn't to scale. Yeah, it doesn't it's... scale. It, it is intended to be cheap uh, when you have a single device. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly uh, with only two devices, you can probably... Uh, get by more cheaply. Get by more cheaply and <coughs> at the same time get much more flexibility for by less use, money by using something else yes yeah okay agreed i don't want to put the backups of my uh, all of the stuff that i do on my synology at home because that's stupid you know it's like red flag single point of failure so i'm currently still in the deciding phase of what i'm going to do but whatever it is that i'm going to do i want to be able to back up let's say free computers completely all of the files that i need to from them to some kind of a cloud service this is my perfect use case for any kind of a cloud service and that's that okay, okay so let's now talk about the possibilities what you can do is first obviously you can use uh, backblaze mm -hmm. you're going to pay uh, some amount of money i think it's six or seven dollars uh, per device and this is going to be it Mm -hmm. uh, the backup that uh, you get for that amount of money is you get uh, backed everything up on that particular device, but nothing else. Seven dollars a month. Okay, seven dollars a month right now. Uh, what you get for the for the, for the price of it is that you have unlimited backup of this single device as long as you pay the uh, monthly subscription. Mm -hmm. So this is completely fine with me. Uh, the thing that is nice is that they are also backing up all the different disks that, that are connected to the computer. Mm -hmm. So that if you have a um, uh, outside uh, uh, external external devices that are connected. Um, uh, sometimes over the, I think it's 30 years, uh, 30 days or so. So if you connect them uh, occasionally, they're going to be backed up. That's good. And this is good, especially if you have large disks that you sometimes use. Mm -hmm. So you can back up uh, a lot of stuff. And if you don't, uh, if you just remember to uh, plug them in uh, every couple of days or every couple of weeks, they're going to be back backed up. There are only two questions that I have for you on this point, yes. because you are much more into this than I am. Do they support encryption? Yes. And is that encryption managed by me? And the second question is, do they have, a, a, I know that they have an application that you can use to access the services. Is it functional? Uh, if you know. I think that uh, my experience is that uh, their application is as functional as humanly possible when it comes to doing a single task. You need to tweak it up, uh, tweak it up a little bit because it is intended to be able to save the bandwidth. So uh, it's going to take enormous amount of time eons to back your back your disk up for the uh, first time. Specifically, I'm talking about application for this, not the, the not the client version. I know the client version is simple enough. Yes. Can I access the the data that's in Black Blaze uh, because through, I know through the web through the web? Yes. Does it work? Yes. Yes, I no had to, problems. I, I had to restore some uh, some information on it. Uh, okay, I, I believe you. I only need the the uh, let's say the benefit of the experience. Cool. So I had to I had to get, uh, grab some things. Uh, you can also uh, you can also uh, download uh, the files, or you can uh, order a disk from them. Okay. Uh, okay. This heavily depends on where you are because uh, if you want to order a disk from somewhere outside of the States is not going to make any sense to you because the amount of money you're going to pay is going to be mm -hmm. an e enormous. But okay. Uh, the next thing is some sort of a cloud storage. No, no, no. Encryption part. Still no answer to that one. Is I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think I'm it's important. Uh, I know that they have encryption built in in the application. I just don't know whether or not you are the one who assigns the, uh, the, the key. The key. Uh, 
I think that the uh, the way that uh, their own um, uh, uh, contract with you is worded, uh, I think, I suspect that the location that um, uh, the location for the key is on your side. Mm-hmm. Because they say that they are unable to provide you with the, the decryption unless you provide them with the key. Okay, so, that sounds so good. So it could be, it could be, anyways, I didn't check. Okay, okay. I, I'm going to say that I didn't check. Um, and they say that uh, basically they are going to uh, they are going to be um, uh, not storing the passwords. They are going to uh, require your verification and so on and so on and so on. Yeah, they require user's private key to decrypt the file. Okay, I'm, I'm yes. happy with that. Okay. So there is a private key, a private transcription key uh, available. Uh, Backblaze cannot access your data in case of lost password. Okay, I'm happy with that. And there's, they even say that in case of lost password, Sapoina or, or any other event. So they are even unable to provide them to the security services. So okay, the, somebody might treat that as a bad thing, but okay. Uh, yes, but okay, but this is this is one of those things that uh, when it comes to when it comes to encryption, if this is true, this means that you only and only you hold the key. Okay. 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 Move forward. So uh, now, now the next contestant in my quest of uh, the best, the, the, the best, or the quest of what I want to have is Dropbox. Okay. Uh, the reason why I was using and I'm still using Dropbox is because okay. uh, it was the first uh, application of its type that I was using. Mm-hmm. I was using it way, 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 way back then when it started becoming uh, free. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm okay. I wouldn't say that I'm amazed by how how it works, but it has changed enough over time uh, so that it makes sense to, uh, sense to me uh, to use it. It is not too expensive. It's something like $10 a month. Okay. And I don't have a limit on how many devices I can use it on. Question, Professor. Yes. So I am completely Dropbox illiterate. Okay. Okay, I used it a little bit, but in no way, shape, or form I'm, am I good with that. So my knowledge is limited. But I remember using it once. Uh, um, the person that I t- that works for a company that I work for shared uh, a virtual machine image with me. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I created my... Uh, trial account which comes with certain amount of uh, capacity whatnot for I don't know 30 days or whatever and the shared file that he shared with me when I wanted to use it was downloaded into my Dropbox account do they still do that or is it independent one from the other uh, do you understand what I'm asking? Yes. Because so, in case, in, if they still have that, that means that they're using my capacity for a file that was shared with me by another user which is stupid I'm not sure. I also had that problem, mm-hmm. uh, but since I am paying for a two terabyte account that is uh, that has enough capacity, I haven't run into this problem. Okay. I know that there is a there is a smaller team uh, account uh, that you can buy, and I know that you can share the files. But in this particular case, I don't know if they are copying the file or they are just referencing the, the file and ab- yeah. uh, uh, okay. referencing the object and then giving you the uh, 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 the, uh, the the access to the object itself. Okay. So I don't know who pays for the uh, pays for the location of the file. Okay. In this particular case, what I want to say is that if we are talking about uh, individuals and we are talking about a, sm- a small individual, so somebody who is not using uh, that much uh, storage, mm-hmm. Dropbox is right now probably the best uh, value for money. How Be- is it in terms of stability? I'm completely I, I haven't had I haven't had a problem with them. That's enough for me. And okay. the, the other thing is that they upgraded their uh, their, their application. Mm-hmm. Uh, it used to be that your uh, files needed to be on your local disk as soon as you installed the application. Okay. So if you paid for I don't know two terabytes of uh, storage, you and you wanted to store two terabytes of storage to the uh, cloud. Okay. You had to have enough storage on your local disk to be able to accommodate for all the files. Okay. Get it. Uh, now. You can just link to the docu- uh, Dropbox folder and it's going to on demand uh, download or upload the files. So the same thing that uh, is happening with all the other services. Okay, that's that's okay. Uh, it works, from from my perspective, it works the same as your cloud station. Okay. But without a problem. You mean without your problem? Without problems, okay? No, no, without your problems. Yes, it has a, it has a nice looking uh, uh, web mm. interface and it works. Okay. So... But the, my problem is that when 
it comes to needing more space, suddenly it's not that cheap. Okay. Because it starts with uh, 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 being uh, uh, ten dollars a month for uh, two terabytes. Mm -hmm. When you pay, when you pay uh, yearly, let me check what happens when you pay uh, monthly. So twelve dollars a month uh, for two, two terabytes, but then it's twenty for three terabytes. And if I need, if I need, uh, yeah, logic. Yes, but if I need to. Uh, storage something like five terabytes or six terabytes, seven terabytes, because this is something that I think that an average professional user is, uh, is was able to um, acquire. acquire during the last couple of years. So let's say eight terabyte drive. This is too expensive. It is. This is too expensive. Now, let's, let's talk about what we can do about that. Uh, Google Cloud. Google Drive. Okay. Google Drive has a problem. Uh, if you want to buy, uh, you can do two things. You can either buy a workspace account that is going to be connected to your uh, company mm -hmm. and it is going to be uh, okay with uh, when it comes to storage, but it's going to have something like called pooled storage. So there is no unlimited uh, storage available on the Google Cloud anymore. Okay. You have a pool storage. This means that your uh, if if you're paying uh, for I don't know ten users, you are allowed to store two terabytes per user mm -hmm. times ten, so twenty terabytes for all the users. So the quota is shared between the users. The, uh, this is a use case that is not interesting to us. We're not talking about business users. Yes, when okay. it comes to when it comes to individual, uh, and I have two of them, by the way. So let's, yes, let's see. This one I actually do use. So uh, if uh, when it comes to uh, individual storage, what I'm using is Google One mm -hmm. because Google One is the the, the one that, is, that was intended to be uh, the uh, end user one, mm -hmm. and. I'm paying uh, the lowest tier because I'm using it for my uh, storage for the Gmail also. Okay. Uh, so now two terabytes is 10, 1049 plus taxes per month. Okay. Or it can be 8% uh, uh, cheaper, whatever it is, if you buy, uh, buy it annually. And five mm -hmm. terabytes is suddenly 26 euros, 26 euros per month. I have 100 gigabyte subscription. So you probably have the same subscription that I had. Uh, th this is the old subscription old. right yeah, now. Because right? it doesn't exist anymore, I think. So 200 gigabytes is uh, th 319 yeah, okay. now. So this is this is something that we actually, that we actually uh, both bu uh, bought simply because we wanted to have the, we didn't have, want to have the problems with the storage of the emails. Okay. Okay. Now, Microsoft. Um, I mean, two terabytes in Google Drive is 115 euros a, a year. So that equals roughly, I don't know, 11, 10, 10 something euros a month for two terabytes. Have this, uh, have this uh, price in your head when we, were we are going to talk about uh, pricing of the disks when it comes to your own storage. Okay. Because this is extremely comparable to uh, what you can do at your own home. Okay. Uh, and this is the reason why I'm, used, I'm choosing the five terabytes. Because okay. when you choose five terabytes, suddenly each year you're paying for a uh, five terabyte disk. Okay. Uh, in in a subscription. Mm -hmm. So suddenly if you are able to create your own um, your own uh, installation at home that's going to use your own disks uh, if you go over five terabytes it is going to be much cheaper to do it at home than it would be to use a subscription okay okay let's see what microsoft does and you are the microsoft guy <coughs> uh can you just now try to help me i'm okay. just less annoyed by microsoft than you are and okay, a little uh, bit more professionally okay. without the hate i have a, i have a smallish problem right now because i cannot even uh navigate the, the microsoft uh, the microsoft uh, told website. it's the vibe can you can you just check on your computer how much is it uh, if i want to buy a personal um a personal storage account on my uh cloud Let's see if I can find that information for you. OneDrive standalone, 100 gigabyte plan for home. There we go. I think we're opening the same page, by the way. Hmm. 
for some reason doesn't want to scroll on this page. It unbroke itself uh, when when yeah. <laughs> after some time. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Yes. Okay, uh, personal. Let's see what they have. Personal seven euros per month. Let's see what that means. Uh, I don't want to sign in. One person, one terabyte, World Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote with uh, external access, blah, 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 69 euros per year, which equals five, five point, let's say five and a half euros per year. Why is it 559.99 dollars uh, per year for me? Where? Here. 59.99 for personal. Yep, I went to the same thing. Microsoft 365 personal. That's what I went with. Okay, so so <laughs> with a terabyte. Okay. So uh, suddenly we have a problem because okay, it's asking me to ask me to connect and uh, use my uh, one person account. multiple devices, one terabyte Windows, Mac OS, iOS supported World Excel, PowerPoint, Defender, OneDrive, Outlook Editor, Clipchamp, OneNote. So all of that is okay. Sixty nine ninety nine dollars per year for me because uh, obviously. Uh, oh, oh yeah, U US part. Okay. okay, 69 euros for European. Okay, and because then, I clicked on Croatian website. And then trying uh, to set me up, talking to experts and so on. So basically, uh, this is cheaper uh, per month than all the other guys, but with a lot of extra included features. Uh, with collaboration included, but as I said, I want uh, raw storage. I'm not interested in collaboration features. Okay. And this makes uh, this unappealing because I only get one terabyte. Okay. I cannot get five terabytes. If I want to get five terabytes, I probably need to go to uh, Microsoft Cloud. Okay. I, I cannot I cannot just simply uh, say okay I want a better deal on the storage. Okay, I'm gonna search for that, but go ahead. Okay, so the next one, uh, when I was trying to when I was trying to uh, shop around and see what is happening, uh, I ran into Hetzner. Yeah, Hessen is the cl cloud provider from Germany, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, they have something called Storage Box. Mm -hmm. Storage Box is a simple storage that uh, they are offering to the to the community or to the customers. That is thirteen euros per month for five terabytes. Okay. So this is the cheapest one yet. It is okay. It has SSH and uh, SFTP uh, connection, so it works for me because it doesn't. It has a limit of I think 10, 10 connections or uh, 12 connections, uh, 20 connections. Okay. Uh, it doesn't have a limit on the traffic, unlike mm -hmm. some other, uh, unlike some other uh, yeah, services. cloud services like. Yes, and buckets. they have a web dev, so I can directly connect uh, my uh, drive to my uh, devices and not think about it. Yeah, that's actually a very appealing feature. So, and they have uh, rsync via SSH. So my Linux are also safe. Yeah, because I, you, I don't you need use to, that. Yes, actually. and, and the, the thing that I also need to mention is that sometimes when I'm thinking about all the other devices and all the other uh, solutions, the client is the problem. Okay. Because uh, the client changes over time. Uh, Dropbox has a client that, change, that is changing. Microsoft has a client that is changing. Google has a client that is changing. So uh, you need to update the client from time to time. Mm -hmm. Webdot is a standard. SSH is a standard. So my SSH or my rsync or my web dev is going to work no matter what from whatever uh, operating system that okay. I'm working from. So it has a point. And the other point is that it is the cheapest one. So okay. 13 euros per... Uh, this looks uh, the most competitive so far. Yes. So then I stopped and then I said, okay, what about if I just store this thing at home? Okay. Now... I know you have a system for that. Yes. Now there is a couple of, there is a couple of solutions for this. Uh, Next Cloud, My Cloud, and all the other uh, asterisk asterisk uh, uh, cloud uh, solutions can be installed locally. Okay. You can also install uh, Unraid. You can also install uh, things like Proxmox. But okay, but Proxmox is Linux. not intended to be. You can install uh, uh, bare metal Linux and then reconfigure it yourself. Uh, you can do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You can do use a free NAS. You can use. Um, there are a couple of other distributions that are just specifically designed to be enable you to do uh, the the backup and everything else. Mm -hmm. What I'm using when I'm uh, and right now mm -hmm. is I have an Android installation. Yeah. 
and I have I'm running sync thing um, client on it so I'm uh, able to connect to my own uh, storage at home and the biggest selling point for this was that I was able to connect not only from my PCs but also from my uh, mobile devices yeah so I can use my mobile phone I can directly um, in real time uh, store all my images mm -hmm. so basically I don't care if something happens to my phone mm -hmm. and this okay. is a big selling point for me okay now about that uh, amount of money mm -hmm. if i want to have a decent storage at home mm -hmm. i want to have uh, a decent hard disk mm -hmm. so let's check uh what is the universal side that we can check and prices of the hardware on we'll go to amazon what okay well people look there first amazon.de amazon.de or amazon.us whatever Let's see how much is WD I Red. I, I would I would say uh, let's go with eight terabyte drive because this looks like uh, the most appealing solution. So it's two hundred and eight dollars uh, euros right now. Plus a little bit for shipping. So. For a little bit of shipping. So let's let's call it uh, five hundred dollars for two drives. Uh, I need some sort of a computer. Mm -hmm. I had an old one uh, lying around, so uh, this was, I, I would say, free. It wasn't free, but it was free. It was uh, amortization. It was, it was fi a financial one. The, so, so it was basically it was basically running around and uh, collecting uh, dust, and this was the way to uh, revive it and reuse it. I have exceptionally important news for you. Yes? Computers don't run around. Uh, lay around. That's much better. Okay, so uh, I'm tired. No, uh, you're not. So uh, two thousand dollars, two hundred dollars, and then times two because mm -hmm. I need uh, redundancy. Mm -hmm. I want redundancy in my storage, and so around five hundred dollars uh, initial investment. I also need to install it. Mm -hmm. This isn't so simple for an average user. Mm -hmm. It is not complicated, but it's not as simple as I don't know, using Blackblaze. Okay, and I suddenly have eight terabyte storage. That oh, I can oh, use in for grade one, okay. Uh, and I can use it in basically unlimited. I have okay. no limits on devices. I have no limits on uh, the way I'm connect, uh, connecting to it. I can use use it as in, in WebDAV. I can use it in SSH. I can use it in RSync. I can do whatever I want to. I can create the next cloud uh, storage and so on. Okay. So this is completely homemade. Okay. And this is with a decent drive. Mm -hmm. Uh if Just I... for the purposes of this discussion, so that you know, uh, the uh, Synology 2 bay NAS that would be equivalent for this is roughly 300 euros. Okay, so add uh, two drives to it, so it's something like four, Eight. three, seven, seven hundred, seven, eight hundred, 750, euros. 750 okay. okay. If I go the uh, completely unreasonable uh, way, and if I go and buy a drive that is was not meant for a network uh, for a touch storage, I can lower that to four hundred euros. If I buy a cheaper drive, that uh, you wasn't mean the, meant the drives? The drives, the drive because, price. so hundred euros cheaper. Because I can get uh, eight terabytes uh, drives for one hundred fifty dollars uh, that are not going to be red, so they're not going to be designed for uh, network yes. storage. Yeah. They're going to be designed for a normal PC. Also, uh, I can go the opposite way and i can buy uh, a black a, a black disc so with the black or whatever and then i can get uh, I, this is going to be not that much expensive so two, two, 277 euros uh, per disc 100 so, euros more than 100 euros yeah. okay 150 euros more for two discs mm -hmm. so this is these are the solutions that we have mm -hmm. now i have been talking for 15 minutes let me see or let me hear what are your thoughts on this what would you choose between the things that you mentioned yes if possible for backup i would use hetzner yes because it's most price competitive because of my use case uh, which is a little bit different to yours or because i'm different than you are let's call it that i would not use any of the other ones i still stand by my approach of using my own Synology uh, NAS, which is much more expensive than what we're discussing because it's a, a five or six drive model. So it's quite, quite a big investment and more drives and whatnot. 
uh, but on, uh, as a side to that, I would also um, consider using some other pieces of software for different reasons. And here is, here are some of my use cases that I either had in the past or currently have. So we use Nextcloud here yes. uh, in, in college. I built that machine for the purpose of delivering exam results. It is, has been running exceptionally well for, what, four years now? Yes. Something like four years now. Since the basically the beginning of the COVID era, uh, we spent, so all of our exams have been stored to that. And I had a discussion about this too so with uh, people working for some of our biggest uh, universities here locally in Zagreb. And they use own cloud, next cloud solutions in a similar fashion. So that, that much is okay. I don't use it personally. At all, although I know it's good, and I used it personally when I was testing it for our use case here in college. I know it has a good application for this, very user friendly to use. You can uh, basically, uh, from that application, you could save a, a picture from a camera directly to it and stuff like that, which might be an appealing option for some people. Um, I use Google Drive because it's convenient for this. Yes. For pictures, for backup, for whatnot. Yes, it's the same thing for me because sometimes I uh, just want to, I just want to, uh, and I must say this, uh, I just want to use the Google Drive uh, because it came with the Samsung, Samsung phone. Samsung, yes. Samsung phones. Yeah, in the past. And OneDrive used to be that as well. But uh, I use Google Drive for some other collaborative reasons. Actually, we work with some 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 of our students. They do some stuff for us and upload some videos, whatnot. But that's that. Uh, in terms of you mentioned actually this use case uh, specifically earlier, which was about the ability to use your files and to have them indexed and to have them contextual searched and whatnot. For that purpose, for me, the best piece of software that I found was Alfresco. Yes, Alfresco, Alfresco is amazing. Uh, Alfresco Community Edition used, I don't know what it stands, uh, how it stands right now, but it used to be able to, uh, to um, Index. store store 10 gigabytes of, uh, of PDF files and whatnot, because this is not your regular file server. In, in this use case, I used it only to upload my PDFs and my documentation. Uh, to it, reason being the uh, the uh, keyword search, index yes, search, yes, yes, contextual yes, yes, search, yes, yes. and whatnot, because it's really lightweight, very simple uh, machine uh, to, that I used for that was a VM in VMware Workstation. They later on switched to container-based deployment, which pisses me off to no end, by the way. Alfresco, thank you very much, because oftentimes it doesn't work properly in terms of the installation, and we had that last, last uh, summer, I think we both you and I worked on this and spent God knows how many hours trying to make it work. Maybe we'll go back to that because we were discussing about centralizing documentation for our courses. Maybe it's going to be Moodle. I don't know. We're going to figure it out. So from my perspective, uh, Synology that I have is absolutely perfect. The reason being is that I want to have my files with me uh, at in, in my office. It's I don't have any kind of, you know, I don't know, secret stuff on it. I, I don't, you know, visit the pirate sites or whatnot. Uh, I don't have any sensitive stuff to it anymore, at least on it. I just use it to store the documentation that we use. I have my own documents there for some some things. I have some of the some of my uh, our podcast videos. I, I store some uh, the raw footage there because I have a lot of space on it, etc. It's a one-time investment. I I had that device for three or four years now, and it's good. Prior to that, I used Thicus. Uh, actually, I had two models, one of them five drive, one of them seven drive. Both of them were given to me, so I didn't pay for them. Thank you, Thicus, by the way. Uh, way back in the days of uh, the, uh, when I was still an IT journalist, slash editor, whatever. They were working perfectly for many, many years. Both of them broke down after more than five years of uh, usage. And they just, they're just scrap now, scrap metal, because I, they're impossible to repair. It is what it is. I actually wanted to buy a new one, but in Croatia, you cannot get them, and there is nobody selling them. So I ended up with Synology, which coincidentally we use here, and I have a couple of other clients using them. They are, let's say, a very good SME type of storage for the purposes that I use them for, although we, I have a couple of more enterprise clients with them. Uh, uh, that that are using them and they are 
in terms of pricing, when you're comparing NAS type of devices, Synology is middle ground, basically. There are more expensive ones like QNAP uh, that have a little bit of a better hardware, perhaps, but their UI is much more janky. Actually, QNAP's UI disappointed me. I used it heavily last year. I mean, Synology, Synology uh, has one thing going for it, and this is uh, ease of use. Superb yeah. UI. Yes, and Super ease of UI. use. Ease of use, you can log into it, and you can actually forget that you're logged in into a web. Because you can actually do the everything that you need to do on the file server, uh, uh, copy files, downloading files, uh, moving files, and so on, and config configuring even configuring the Docker's and configuring the virtual yes. machines from the Synology. It is not going to work fine. Uh, okay. Yeah, and they actually have uh, additional licenses for the virtual machine manager, which pisses me off to no end. But that's another story. But they do have one more service, which is really really good, and maybe a solution for some of your problems somewhere in the future. They have amazing stack of backup utilities. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. I, know. But and, I, I, I didn't mention that uh, I'm not using Synology. I'm not using it specifically for the price. Okay. Because I didn't That's want completely to, reasonable as uh, well. My, uh, my uh, experience with Synology is I have, I have been running at least six or seven of them for the, in the last couple of years. And my experience with them is that if you buy the cheapest one, Mm -hmm. you are going to have a bad time it is going to yeah, be slow. it is going to be slow it is going to be uh i wouldn't say unusable but n you are not going to be happy there with is it. Uh, i have to stop you there because you made a very good point and i can uh, add something to that point with Synology, you should never buy their, uh, you know, Marvel, whatever, ARM-based models. Yes. You should buy the Intel-based the, the Intel yes. And then you are completely fine. Yes, and the, the, the problem is that I didn't want to spend that much money. Yeah, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't want to get the six-drive uh, one because I didn't have six drives uh, that I wanted to use. I didn't want to end up with buying six smaller drives. So I went with uh, a couple of big drives in my PC and I already had the PC running, lying around. And... Uh, when it comes to comparing uh, different solutions, uh, unfortunately, a single PC running something like Unraid or uh, Free Freelance or something is going to be better than Synology. Yeah, price competitiveness doesn't exist and, and, for and, Synology. And when it comes to speed, when it comes to be, uh, the ability to run virtual For machines, the size that you're yes, talking yes, about. Yes, 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 yes. correctly. Uh, correct. But I have another very strong argument for it. And I'm not trying to advocate them. I'm just telling yes. you from a perspective of me, I've been using it for 10 plus years now. I really know them I'm like top to bottom. If you know what the hell you're doing on them, basically you're faced with a Linux machine that is running MD RAID. Yes, 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 yes. So yes, yes. all of the knowledge that you have about that is applicable. And yes, if, you, if you run into any problems, you can fix them. I had, I had. A... And I had a couple of problems. And because of the fact that uh, my background is heavily in Linux, I was able to solve those problems, no problem. I had a, I had a uh, Synology uh, breakdown on me after five years or so of running. I just put Take the disk uh, in Linux took the disk into a Linux machine, uh, rebuild the RAID, and just uh, kept using it. Yeah, I kept using it for a year because people were uh, just they said uh, basically the problem with the users is if they don't see a problem and they didn't see a problem because there wasn't a problem and just switch out the disks over, rebuild the RAID and uh, put it online, mm -hmm. they didn't even notice that we changed the machine. Mm -hmm. So they kept using the machine as it were uh, <laughs> Synology and I said, okay, please now remove your files because I need to take this thing down. Mm -hmm. Why? It's working. No, it wasn't working. It had a harder problem. And um, to make matters uh, much funnier, uh, a colleague of ours, I'm going to mention it, uh, I'm going to mention him later to you. Um, he took the Synology from me changed the single capacitor and i think that he upgraded something he told me that he did some some sort of hardware change and uh, the Memory, synology probably. was working uh, happily ever after ha happily ever after there was a harder problem mm -hmm. and i didn't check for the harder problems uh, on the, but there was actually a harder problem on, in this revision of the motherboard can i circle back to, to for just one second to the backup uh, applications on synology yes. i know i'm boring you to death but this is an important point to be made uh, the hyper backup st stack of solutions that hype, uh, that Synology offers for free. Okay, yes. it's a module that you just deploy; you don't have to pay for it. Offers some things that no other uh, solution necessarily has or has up to that level. Just give me one example. Let's say that you want to migrate from one Synology to another. 
you can do a hyper backup job that is going to back up your LUN from original source one to the destination one. Yes. And you can then use the – basically, it's in, like an image file. And then you can uh, hook that up to an iSCSI target because it supports iSCSI as well. Stuff like that is invaluable in business environments. In bi- and, uh, I did want to mention those things. Uh, you have uh, the ability to back up almost all the cloud uh, yes. solutions directly to Synology, which makes enormous sense. Yes. You are able to create uh, clones uh, that are – Let's call them warm. They have uh, snapshotting now as well. Yes, they have snapshot, but they also uh, are able to create a, a warm standby uh, solution that the price for this cannot be beaten. You they can, have Moodle. They have you yes, know, Tomcat. Yeah, they, they, are, they, are, they have amazing. A lot of stuff there. But it's the problem good. is that you need to buy uh, expensive. Device. You need to buy an expensive device. Yeah. And uh, some, uh, there comes a point where it doesn't make sense to buy a more expensive device. Completely agreed. You need to buy a server because suddenly you are going to be uh, going into the price range of a couple of thousand euros. And then suddenly it is much cheaper to just buy a US server. You know, and, you know the reason why I still keep on using them? Apart from the obvious ones that you know, there is one more. Because when I got the first Plicus yes. uh, N5200 Pro actually, okay. I installed it. Uh, guys from Tikus, people from Tikus, told me just just keep it. You're doing a good job with it. We know you understand technology, so keep on using it. Basically, that defined my use case and kind of spoiled me in a sense. And I just, you know, you are a creature of habit at the end of the day. So I don't want to change that. There are other operational reasons why I don't want to change that usage model, and those operational reasons are. Uh, the ones that are uh, not forcing me, but making me not to switch to cloud, and I will never do that. Uh, there are a couple of reasons why I would use a homemade solution even when it comes to cloud, and there are a couple of reasons why I would switch to Synology. Mm-hmm. Uh, one being, I had a discussion a couple of uh, a couple of weeks ago with a client of mine, uh, and he had a very specific uh, question. He wanted a solution that is going to back up things at his own home because mm-hmm. he's not trusting the cloud because that, that is that is completely Fair. okay and he wanted a solution that he would, would be able to pick up if he needs to leave his home in, in, in hurry so he wanted something that's going to be slow a uh, small mm-hmm. small okay it's going to be uh, just connected to the power and to the network so he can just uh, take out the power take out the network and uh, take the box with him uh, i know that it sounds paranoid but it makes a lot of sense if he's a developer, if it's an IP, he, he, uh, he, if he, he has, has a specific IP. usage case that he has enormous amounts of data that are uh, completely unique, so he has to have them with him. Okay. And there is no way for him to keep uh, any kind of storage uh, online that is going to be smaller than probably 10 terabytes or so. Okay. So his usage case is particularly uh, tailored to uh, be sold by something like a Synology or okay. QNAP or something else. Mm-hmm. So there are some edge cases. Mm-hmm. But from my perspective, uh, having a cloud and combining it with my own private cloud works. Mm-hmm. I'm not completely sure how I'm going to go uh, and proceed. I think I'm going to go with uh, using Hesner mm-hmm. uh, or some storage like this mm-hmm. uh, because it makes sense to have a box that is going to be an SSH because then I can use uh, rsync through R clone, and I can also uh, use uh, no because I can use rsync to R clone because this uh, makes me uh, capable of using my own private keys to for uh, for encryption. I get it. So I can I can synchronize whatever I want uh, between my clouds, my whatever units that there are, just by using bash. I can put uh, put it in a container that is going to run wh- wherever, and I just need my own private key to be there. For the encryption. I have a couple of licenses of Acronis. You can do it with that as well. You can just create image file with encryption because it supports you punching in the password for it. Yes, but this, this uh, I don't want a single image. Uh, this is another thing. I don't want my file to be a single file. I want to okay, be able... Okay, that's our difference. Again. Yes, yes. I yeah. want to be able to... Uh, I mean, access... you can mount that file. You yes, know that. yes, yes. You know, but 
I want to be able to uh, directly access uh, individual Let's files. Let's say from, from your... Yes, 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 yes. Kickers, yeah. This is one of those reasons. Yes. Because if you remember that uh, sometimes you ask me to, for me to provide you something and I just provide you with the, the download link from the Dropbox. Yes. I want yep. to be able to do this on any, any device because I need it. I don't want to be at my computer at all the times when somebody needs just, just a simple yep. link. That's all good. Uh, before we finish, I wanted to mention one thing that I uh, uh, found in the couple of, the last couple of uh, weeks while I was working for it. It's something called the paperless NGX. Um, it's basically something that is akin to uh, Alfresco, but okay. the, the idea is that they are just completely directly into what Alfresco was doing, but without any other things. Okay. So they are dealing with the documents and that's it. You so can do your OCR. It is able to do OCR and documents. It is uh, searchable. It is able to select machine text. learning power document matching. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, so so it's it's something that is uh, that is able to work on uh, PDFs, uh, office documents, and uh, images. But the idea of this is uh, Alfresco is much more uh, oriented towards everything that can be a document, so content. This is only for the documents. There there is another problem with Alfresco, if we're honest. It's too big. It's yes, complex. it's not only that, it's more aimed at business because it has loads of modules that can be integrated with various business applications uh, from Active Directory onwards, which for personal use you don't need. And also the 10 gigabyte file limitation, if it still stands, I, I should check that, but that was the, that was it when I was checking it the last for a free uh, version of it. So community version is probably not enough for some people. It's not enough uh, anymore because uh, the problem is that right now, I think an average uh, win, uh, Microsoft Word file mm -hmm. is something like 200K, so five files per megabyte mm -hmm. for an average file. Uh, an average PDF is also getting bigger. So 10 gigabytes is something that I can easily uh, outdo. Mm -hmm. Even by use, just uh, using my own files that I have, so and this is not this is not uh, including images. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is able to OCR and use images, and images are going to quickly be over 10, 10 gigabytes. Yeah, it's free images. You're done. Yes. So this is this is one. But Alfresco is not meant for that. Yes, I know. I know. I know. If it, you're if you're talking about ISO images, if you're talking about pictures, images that's different. Of course. Yes. So the, the idea is the uh, this is the uh, pictures. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that uh, it is able to uh, deal with the images and play text files and so on. Is this free? Yes. I like it a lot already. It's 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 on GitHub. I like it a lot already. This might be the solution to some of the problems that we have in our education process. Yes, I know. This is the reason why I was mentioning it. Well done, you. You found another solution for our problems, and he's good at that, by the way. Uh, I'm just, I'm just uh, good at uh, completely wasting my system trying out different things, and when the outcome is positive, as then I, I say okay. As I said many times on this podcast, you are the ideal beta tester. I'm turning into an alpha tester because the uh, <laughs> landscape is turning into alpha testing. <laughs> yes, because the software <laughs> quality. Okay. So this one is GP GPL3 license. Okay, we like that a lot. Okay, so let's finish this thing up. Uh, let us know how would you back up your system? Because what we did is we did an hour or so uh, mm -hmm. of uh, naming different things that you can use to back up your uh, computer. Explained our use cases. Yes, but we didn't say what the def definitive uh, solution is. There isn't one. You think uh, there the, is? There are two things that we need to discuss. First, we are going to need to spend some money. Oh, yes. And, and or you're going to be need to learn something about how your devices are going to work. Mm -hmm. Either you're going to go with the more expensive option that is going to be more user-friendly or less expensive option that is going to be less user-friendly but probably more flexible. Mm -hmm. But you're going to be needing spend, uh, to spend some money. Yes. Okay. okay. Go ahead. No, no, no. I started. You finish. No? Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. So that's it. That, that was a podcast. See you next time. He was Weather and I was Yasmin. See you. Bye-bye.